Hello, welcome to DarnThatYarn.com's crochet tutorial series, Beginner Basics. Today we'll cover basic supplies and the chain stitch. Let's get started. First thing I have here is a darning needle. Darning needles have blunt ends and a large eye in order to accommodate the different size yarns. We use this to hide ends and to join seams. And then next here we have stitch markers. Sometimes you'll work in what's called a round, and in order to keep track of which row you're on, you'll wrap one of these around one of the, the beginning or end stitches to be able to keep track. And of course, you need a good sharp pair of scissors. And crochet hook. And crochet hook has the size uh, on the handle here and it'll have US size which is a letter and number combination and then you'll have the size given in millimeter which is also known as the UK size. And the sizes vary from location to location. Um, they're, they're generally pretty standard however if you ever have a question as to which hook you should be using I would go by the millimeters to be safe if it's given in size in the pattern as both. Right here we have a size H hook which if you look at the yarn that we're going to use I have it right side up you look at the yarn we're going to use it'll give that the information it'll advise which is the most appropriate hook size to use for this yarn. This is an absolute what you really want to do is this is like this is a gauge indicator and it's telling you that for a 4 by 4 inch square you would crochet 14 single crochet 17 rows of 14 single crochet with a size H hook, H hook and it'll get you a 4 by 4 square however we'll talk about gauge more later if a size H hook isn't getting you that gauge you may need to use a different hook than indicated this is what's considered medium weight size 4 yarn. It's wool. We're going to go ahead and start with how to access your yarn here. Not all the packages will tell you, but you'll see one end tucked in. You're going to draw your yarn out of the opposite end of that, but before you do, you have to remove this, otherwise this side will tangle. And this, you're going to reach in you're going to pull out your yarn and find your end. And when you first start, you want to make sure you draw out several feet of yarn. Anyway, you don't want to be doing that while you're crocheting, especially if you're a beginner crocheter. It will affect your tension. And your stitches will be tighter than they would be otherwise if you're trying to crochet while you're drawing yarn from the skein. So, of course I have a nice lovely mess here. Okay, now that we've got that mess settled, I won by the way, I'm going to show you how to do the chain stitch. So first we're going to start with a slip stitch. It looks a little bit like a pretzel. You're going to Form your yarn like this. You can see that. You're going to take your hook and the crossover piece away from the end. You're going to go under it. You're going to go under it and up. Then you're going to take your two ends of yarn here and pull. And that's your beginning loop. I've been doing this for a while and I automatically make the beginning loop by making the crossover and then I put my fingers through and draw the, the loop through and then put it onto the hook. You can do it whichever way. I'm sure there's other techniques out there too as well. So holding your yarn. You want to make sure that you keep your tension. Most people 
and the way you would do it, especially if you're just starting out, is you would wrap the yarn around your pinky and then over your first finger. And that helps keep the tension from the skein of yarn and this helps keep the tension between your work. This is what's called the tail. You use your other fingers here usually to hold the tail there and keep your, your work straight so that you can see what stitches you're working on. Most people I know crochet underhand. They hold their crochet hook like a pencil. I have problems doing that so I crochet overhand. You can do whichever way is more comfortable for you. You can play around with it and figure out what works best. Okay, so now we have our beginning loop on our hook holding our tail. We're going to take the hook and go in front of and under. Turn your hook so that you catch your your yarn strand underneath the hook and you're going to pull it through the existing loop on your hook. You've just made one chain stitch. You're going to go ahead and repeat this process however many times you need to. When you're doing this, if you go to pull your stitch through and you're having problems, if you see you got a little bit of uh, leeway here with your tension on the hook, you're pulling it too tight before you go to make that stitch and that's going to that's going to make it difficult for you to complete the rest of your work, your piece as well. So you want to keep a little bit of slack in there so that you have enough room to fit your hook through the loop. You're going to go ahead and complete however many chains your pattern calls for. I'm going to go ahead and just do a handful here so that I can show you how to count your chains. Most of the time when you have a pattern, it will tell you when you go ahead, when you're done with your chain, it will tell you to do the next stitch in the second chain from hook, third chain from hook. So I'm going to show you what that means here. Um, this is your, your loop that you have on the hook. But right past that, that's your chain that you just made, that you just completed. If you go back through that, you're basically undoing your stitch. So most patterns are going to start with either the second chain from hook or more, but that's how you're going to count these. This is this chain you just completed is your first chain from the hook. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches, nine chain stitches, and this bump you see at the end, that's your starting loop. We don't count the starting loop. And that's how you chain stitch.